Tiji Foundation received the Public Welfare Award in the Annual Religious Organization Awards. Tiji volunteers provided scholarship aid to 2,400 flood-affected students. Selamat datang ke Daya Headlines, saya Simon Gan. Terima kasih menyertai sesi berita kita. Welcome to Daya Headlines, thank you for joining us. In Taiwan, the Ministry of Interior's Annual Religious Organization Award was held recently with 169 NGOs being awarded. Suji's long-term care for the elders have been set up in various communities, energizing the local seniors. Volunteers have also brought love and care into the prison, using a mother's love to accompany the inmates. Due to the pandemic and also the seventh lunar month, volunteers also spread awareness about adopting a vegetarian diet, bringing positive energy towards the society. During the seventh lunar month, we promote compassion and vegetarianism. It's not the Hungry Ghost Festival, but it's an auspicious month. We need to break the stereotype that the seventh lunar month is unlucky. This year is Tsuji's 55th anniversary, and it's also the 30th anniversary for our recycling mission. What we can see is not only the physical acts of recycling, but the master said that by doing recycling, we must also know about spiritual recycling. The compassion spirit of religion has brought light to the dark corners of society. A total of 169 religious groups were awarded. Caring for the local fishermen, the Catholic Diocese of Taichung carried out aid distribution, providing love and care. A total of 30,000 Catholic followers from three different counties devoted selflessly to help the needy. We also care for the families living in the mountains due to the social structure. Many young people from the rural and mountainous areas leave their hometown, leaving the seniors and kids at home, which leads to society issues. I'm very thankful to all of you who cooperated with the long-term care plan 2.0, hosting meals for the seniors and also taking care of the lives of solitary seniors, bring warmth to society. It's the first time the president has attended the award presentation ceremony. Seeing different religious organizations coexisting harmoniously in Taiwan, we can feel all the love and care being generated on this land. Nilo Auditor, an eight-year-old boy in the Philippines, accidentally stumbled and fell while getting food from a pot, causing hot water to scale his body with extensive third-degree burns. Suchi's financial assistance allowed Nilo to successfully perform a skin transplant. With extensive burns of his body, eight-year-old Nano walked cautiously to prevent his wound from accidentally tearing apart after the operation. <laughs> My son got his burns after I steamed some bananas for the family. He helped me serve the bananas by standing on a stool to get them from the pot. Unfortunately, he lost his balance and fell, and the pot of hot water was spilled on his body. At that moment, Nino was sent to the doctor immediately. The family depends on Nino's father's income as a motorbike driver as they could not afford the operation fee. Dr. Opus recommended us to seek Tsuji Foundation's assistance for the operation because we really cannot afford the huge operation fee. Eventually, there was a hope to treat the small boy with a third-degree burn. With GG assistance, Nano underwent an autonomous skin grafting operation. I am truly thankful for Tsuji Foundation for reaching out to us so that my son can undergo the operation, especially as we cannot afford the fee. My heartfelt gratitude to Tsuji. The red scar has become his mark of bravery. The strong Nino will continue to pass every day with his bright smile. Ako si Nilo H Auditor. Nagpasalamat ko sa Tutsi. In the United States, an attending emergency room physician in San Jose, California, Dr. Hin came up with a solution to protect frontline workers from COVID-19, which is a barrier tent. As this tent is crafted by hand, Dr. Hin asked Suji volunteers to help make more tents so that more healthcare workers can feel protected. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
The Hint Barrier Tent was first thought of March when we had the first nurse got sick with COVID, taking care of a patient. Despite having the mask on, he actually managed to get COVID. Two people would deploy this thing. It sticks right up, and the patient would sit inside of this. Okay. So I came up with this tent. It's actually a clear barrier made of a plastic bag and we made it in the form of a tent to cover the patient to keep all the stuff coming out of their airway inside this tent. But also we have to be able to get our hands on the patients. So we actually made holes. And then in order to keep the holes closed, we made these sleeves that we can zip up. The bag is clean, it's FDA approved. I taught the volunteers who are actually very good with their hands from uh, months of practice of making caps and now they are able to put together this tent for me. They seem to be very good at it. And I want to put an airway down this patient, like an intubation for ventilators. Now, I've done this work for many decades now. <laughs> I don't get that exhausted over it. Even with the pandemic over, I'm hoping that we would eventually appreciate what we had and what we'll have in the future that we know how to use these things better and how to protect ourselves. It won't be just for this pandemic, it's for future pandemics as well. We'll be more prepared, hopefully. Suchi Care recipient Din Ti Hong is blind and lives with her daughter. The two get by selling recyclables. Their home is old and dilapidated, and whenever it rains, the roof leaks. Upon learning their situation, Tzu Chi and the victims of Agent Orange Association in Travin City partner up to remodel their house. Their roof is covered in holes while their flooring has sunk down near one centimeter below the normal street level. This is the home which Tzu Care recipient Ding Ting Hong and her daughter live in. They collect recyclables to make a living. Our home is low-lying. So it floods when it rains. Before, we would put nylon bag collected from the recyclables on top of the mosquito nets to keep the rain out since the root leaks when it rains. We get wet even though we are indoors. Yes, up. I'm so happy I don't have to worry about roof linking when it rains now. Thank you to Chi and the support from the government. I'm so happy as well. I never imagined I would have enough money to make repairs for the house. With love and care supporting the two, the mother and daughter are finally living a good life. In Taiwan's Yulin County School Kung Township, Suchi Care recipient Mr. Lai's restroom door threshold is too high and the tiles on the floor are too slippery. So volunteers help renovate his restroom, ensuring his safety while using the restroom. This is the restroom space for Mr. Lai's home. The floor tiles do not have anti-slip effects, and the door threshold is too high to enter. The threshold is too high. It's 18 centimeters. If he needs to go in, they must bring him up, and it's very exhausting and inconvenient. The place that Mr. Lai enters the most is the restroom, so this place is very important. In order to create a barrier-free space, the first step is to completely remove the bathtub. The floor tiles are dug up to add new sipstone tiles on the ground, which is on the same level of the door's threshold. Changing to a new toilet, which is placed at the entrance of the restroom, making it easier for whoever takes care of Mr. Lai. My husband now can shower easily and safely. Mr. Jun has been in Taiwan for 12 years due to marriage to Mr. Lai, having two children yet facing challenge as her husband suffered from multi infract dementia and stroke twice, causing him to lose intelligence and the ability to comprehend speech. During the 20th anniversary of the Daling Tsuchi Hospital, doctors and volunteers went twice to visit Mr. Lai to care for his health. They also helped renovate his restroom, providing a more comfortable space to the family. 
In Changzhou Township, Jiangxi Province, the heavy rainfall in July has led to devastating flooding. Many local residents suffered a heavy loss due to the floods. School is about to reopen, so Tsuji volunteers provided scholarship aid to 2,400 flood-affected students. <laughs> In Changzhou Township, Jiangxi Province, the flood waters have not receded, and most of the houses are still partially submerged underwater. Such volunteers came in boats to send their love and care. Volunteers visit the houses of the scholarship recipients one by one using small boats. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid to have dreams. We must always move forward as there is no such thing as failure in the world. Providing love and encouragement, the volunteers do not want the studies of the children be affected due to the floods. After the house visitations, the volunteers distributed scholarships and stationaries for the students. School is about to reopen soon and education cannot wait. We are thankful to the leaders who gave us his full support, enabling Chiji to provide flood affected families with scholarship and our most sincere blessings. Although the temperature outside was very hot and the volunteers were all sweating, they are still willing to help the 2,400 students achieve their dreams. I need to study hard. I want to be like all of you, contributing towards society and the country. During the floods back in 1998, my grandma already told me about Siji. She told me that Siji gave her a blanket and warm clothes. I am also very grateful towards the scholarship you provided this time. The floods have brought Siji to Changzhou Township once again, enabling the younger generation to get to know Siji. And together, they can embrace the challenges faced during the flood. In Taiwan, at Suwao Recycling Education Station, there is a volunteer, Liu Shichao, who has superb abilities. He volunteers at the recycling station from morning till night, repairing electronics and gardening. He said that he believes that with a determination to do things, nothing is impossible. Let's meet this outstanding volunteer. I am in charge of gardening. There are electronics that need repairs and weeding is also needed. He keeps studying the craft of horticulture. If needed, he will add fertilizers. He might add chaff or fertilizers to keep improving the soil. We were away, but on our way back to recycling station, it was rain hard. What should we do? He told us not to worry and simply press a button on his phone. After pressing the remote control button, the water stopped running. I was impressed. He is quite a perfectionist. When he sees something, he can be very creative. When we tell him an idea, he will come up with pictures of it in his mind. Then he can quickly come up with a plan to execute. My mission is to deliver joy and convenience to people. When my mother passed away, I needed money for the funeral service. He was very kind and he gave me 1800 US dollars. He also took out a loan from Credit Association. He's my family's benefactor. I feel very confident that they're such a good person. His actions moved me to join, which is not unlike inspiring 10 people to join. After my name, I'll write two, which means I've been here two times. And three means I've come here three times. Now I see the recycling station as my home. In my dictionary, every word is OK. After saying OK, I will figure out a way to do things. The master said that being mindful makes one professional. Nothing is impossible. In one of Kaohsiung's outdoor markets, there is a vendor known as Auntie Atian, who has been selling thick seafood soup and other traditional Taiwanese meat dishes for over 30 years. But in the past 10 years, she has dreamt of converting to selling vegetarian dishes. But in the beginning, her family was against the idea. Now they have finally come around, and she can finally make her wish come true. 
Auntie Atian's vegetarian restaurant has a delicious thick veggie soup, which it's known for. However, the store used to sell under her husband's name, Uncle Atian, for the past three generations, and their most popular dish was the Taiwanese squid soup. Everyone was against it, and my husband was the one most against the idea. Auntie Atian had a hard time convincing everyone to switch. He was adamant about it and said it when the market closed down, or else it was over his dead body. And then really soon the market closed down, my husband then shortly passed away after we moved here. No one knew that the husband's words would be so foretelling. However, Auntie Atian believes that when her husband died of sickness, it was also his way of giving her permission to convert to a vegetarian business. We need to continue to live, right? I didn't want to see my grandchildren killing any more fish. I don't want them to continue to form bad affinity with living creatures. I told my children I need to start selling vegetarian dishes. My grandmother didn't want us to deal with the dead body of the fish or animal. I like to help my family out, so they aren't as tired. We thought maybe if we switched to vegetarian food, customers would not come, but they still visited our establishment. It gets hot right in the morning, and it's humid in here, too. What can I do? Everyone works hard at their post to keep this family business going. When my father passed away, it seems like he was giving us his blessings to continue on fulfilling my mom's dreams. Our business before was really good, and we were afraid of the new business tanking, and we all struggled with the decision. Many of her customers also decided to become vegetarian due to her influence. It was difficult to make the change. I bought a bunch of recipe books to read up on. My mother says we need to keep a positive attitude while we work, as it can translate into a delicious dish when eaten. It's the one-year anniversary since this restaurant has changed into a vegetarian one. And finally, they are no longer losing money. They've been able to maintain the traditional flavoring while making it a vegetarian one successfully completing the matriarch's dream for the last 10 years. I believe in myself because I know in the future more and more people will become vegetarians. In the seventh lunar month, Tsuji Malaysia chapter will host an adaptation of the Sutra of Profound Gratitude to parents. As the movement control order has gradually relaxed, volunteers and Tsuchings have switched from practicing online to having rehearsals at the Jingsi Hall. To get prepared for the upcoming sutra adaptation of Profound Gratitude to Parents, Malaysian Chi-Tings from Penang, mobilized by senior Chi-Tings, practiced through the Internet during the movement registration order. Because of the epidemic, we can't go out to practice together, and the Internet network may not be very good for everyone, especially in sign language and drumming performance, as we all need some movement, so we have encountered some difficulties in teaching. The seventh lunar month is also the month of filial piety, which matches with the message we want to convey through the sutra, that is, to promote filial piety. As the epidemic slowed, Chi Chings and volunteers officially returned to Jin Si Hall for rehearsal with adequate epidemic prevention measures. I have never performed sign language before. It's a challenge for me to memorize a lot of sign language in a short period of time. Through this process, I can understand myself better so that I know how much I need to improve. The lyrics, that is, the sutra contains a deeper meaning. Besides parents' love, I can see many other things hidden in it. All performing volunteers are trying hard to practice every time, hoping that the sutra adaptation can be perfectly presented when it is officially performed on September the 12th. In Kaohsiung, one child was taken care of by a great-grandmother since childhood. Chen Mingyu, who is 19 years old, wanted to be a diplomat, but changed to the nursing department to care for his aging great-grandmother, showing the virtue of being filial. Not only assisting with clerical work, Chen Mingyo, a work-study student, is busy going in and out of offices. He is studying at Fuyin University's Department of Foreign Languages, where he can speak three foreign languages. 
。Maxi， สวัสดีครับ。Maxi， สวัสดีครับ。彭车松沙，坤坤卡，我的名字叫做松沙。他是把自己的优点、自己的能力。He enthusiastically share his strengths and abilities with the friends around him, or even the students from Thailand. 或甚至来自于泰国的学生。He's very competent in assisting foreign students, and he was a regular winner in school competitions. He originally wanted to continue his studies with the goal of being a diplomat. His specialty when he originally came in was to be a diplomat, but because of a change in health in his great grandmother last semester, he mentioned to me whether there is such a possibility that he could study in the Department of Nursing. At the beginning of this year, his 86-year-old great-grandmother suffered an injury to her spine and had mobility issues as her daily care became more inconvenient. I'm sick and he takes care of me personally. He takes good care of me and even helps me put my pants. It's all up to him. In order to take care of her, this good student had to ask for leave from school continuously. But for Mingyo, she is not just a great-grandmother. When I was four years old, my mom and dad got divorced, and my great-grandmother took me to school. This was when my classmates had their mothers and fathers taking them to school. Of course, I would feel envious when I saw that. I was different from others. But now that I think about it, it was a sweet memory. The two of us would hold hands like this and walk home from school. It's possible that when I grow up or even get old, these memories will be carved in my heart forever. His mother had entrusted him to his great grandmother for a long time. Though they were nearly 70 years apart, they had an affection that was like mother and son. I have taken care of more than a thousand children and this great grandson. This child really was the most worthwhile. Really, he wants to stay my side. I can't drive him away. I told him to live with mother. He doesn't want. He is so nice to me and seems to be thanking me for being really filial. The love of great grandmother healed the lack of maternal love when he was a child. Now that she is old, Mingyo has come forward to make up for this lack of medical knowledge and has put aside the dream of being a diplomat to pursue studies in the Department of Nursing. Sometimes I sigh when the hands that took care of me will change from just a few wrinkles to a pile of wrinkles. This makes me think that time flies so fast, and I'm afraid to think that the time spent with me will get shorter and shorter. To me, my great-grandmother is like my second mother. I don't want to let regret stay in my heart for the rest of my life. I can give back to her as much as possible right now. Although his academic career has turned around for the sake of his great-grandmother, filial piety is something that cannot wait. The love of a great-grandmother is like a beacon, preventing him from being lost in the future. A group of seniors in Kaohsiung perform a special mass dance, with the first dancer being over 80 years old. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.